Hey folks, welcome back to Eigen Designs. I've got a really unique video for you today. About a month ago, I built a sit-stand walnut desk for some friends of ours that live in the neighborhood. And he loves the desk and he came back to me and said, hey, I would really like you to build a flag case for my father, who's a veteran who recently passed away. And I thought about building a traditional walnut flag case like you see here, but I wanted to honor his memory and do something really special by incorporating some of the design elements that I had in a recent cutting board that I did. So in this video, we're going to crank our America meter up to 10 and build a stars and stripes flag case. If you want to see how I built this, then stick around and I'll show you how. To make this Stars and Stripes flag case, I'm going to be using a combination of three different types of wood. I'll be using Paduk for the red stripes, Maple for the white stripes and the white stars, and then Purple Heart to replicate the blue background of the flag. If you're not interested in creating a Stars and Stripes flag case, but just want a regular single wood flag case, you can skip ahead to the next chapter, and from there on out, the steps will be the same regardless of if you have the Stars and Stripes pattern or not. Okay, to begin this build, we're going to rip our 3 quarter inch purple heart to 4 inches wide. Next up, to create the stripes, we're going to rip our maple boards and our paduke boards into strips that are 0.8 inches thick. To create the stripe pattern, you need 5 total strips and the total width of those strips glued together needs to be 4 inches. So each of the strips that we're ripping is going to be 0.8 inches. When you finish, you should have something that looks like this. Now I'm making multiple flag cases right now, so you may not have as much stock as I've milled, but this is what it should look like. Once you have your strips, you can arrange them in a pattern. I'm starting and ending with red, but you can start and end with white if you want to. I do want to mention that the American flag starts and ends with red. That's why I've done this here, but it's up to you as the creator what you would like to do. We'll come back later and cut this long board into two different smaller boards later, but we're gluing them up in this step just to save a little bit of time. While I wait for the glue to dry, I turn my attention to the CNC work, uh, specifically the inlay that's going to go inside of the purple heart. The first step to create the star inlay is to create the pockets that are going to be in the purple heart. And then the next step would be to cut out the maple inserts that are going to go inside these pockets. If you don't have a CNC, there is a product that is sold on Amazon that has the male and female router stencils where you can just do this with a regular router. I've never used it before, but I've heard some pretty good things about it. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Now that the stripe boards have had a chance to dry, I take them through the jointer and then the planer just to remove any excess glue and to make sure that we're starting off with flat parallel surfaces prior to cutting them up using my crosscut sled. So at this step in the process, we still have one long stripe board and then a shorter purple heart board with the star inlay pockets already carved out. Now you'll notice here that they're different thicknesses right now and we're not going to thickness plane these boards together until the star inserts have been put into the board. And this part's a little bit tedious but as this comes together and you get a chance to surface the stars and you see that they are perfectly inlaid into the purple heart, it's a really satisfying thing to watch. Once the inlaid stars had a chance to dry, I then surfaced the entire board using the CNC. This gets rid of the excess star that's poking out of the top and allows me to use the planer in a later step. It's now time to cut the stripe board to length. I used my crosscut sled to put a fresh, clean edge on one side and then cut the board into two different pieces. One piece is 17 and 3 quarter, the other is 25 and an eighth. I'll splash those dimensions up on the screen in case anyone's trying to follow along. 
With our boards cut to length, the next step is to thickness plane the boards until they're all the same thickness. I'm trying to leave these boards as thick as possible, so as soon as I've got material removed from all the boards, I'm going to stop. You can achieve this by lightly making pencil marks on the tops of each one of the boards, and as soon as the pencil marks are removed, you can stop. I also take the time to sand up to 220 grit on each of the boards while I have them disassembled. Once you assemble everything, it's kind of hard to get good sanding coverage, so I just take the time to do that here before proceeding to the next step. One of the interesting things I've learned after working with Purple Heart is as you plane it and sand it, it actually dulls the color. And one of the woodworkers I follow on TikTok said that exposure to UV rays in small doses can help reoxidize that top layer and restore the color. So I did what any good woodworker would do, and I set out a towel. I got my piece of Purple Heart nice and comfortable, put on some cool shades, and let him sit in the sun for about 30 minutes, hoping to restore some of that beautiful color before applying the finish. I'll come back to this later in the video, and you can be the judge of how effective this was. From this point onwards, the steps to create the flag case, whether it be stars and stripe pattern or a more traditional flag case, are the exact same assuming you start out with boards of this dimension. If you do go with the stars and stripes design, make sure that your stripes are actually aligned properly because your pattern is probably not symmetrical both ways. Make sure it's faced the right way. And if you look closely at the alignment of the stars, they're closer to the left edge than they are the right edge. Because we're gonna cut off a piece of the right side as molding in a later step, I wanted to leave enough space to account for the saw blade kerf, which is about an eighth of an inch. Once all that is done, I then go through and I mark which edges are going to be routed. And I chose to route the edges with a simple chamfer bit. The design itself is already pretty busy, so I didn't want a very intricate molding design, but you could do something a little bit more uh, traditional and complex if you wanted to. We'll be making some pretty specific cuts in order to make this triangle fit together perfectly. The magic angles to make this work is 22 and a half degrees in the bottom left hand and the bottom right hand corner and 45 degrees at the top of the triangle. I'll be using a digital angle finder to help hone in my saw blade to the exact degree that we need to have to make these angles. I start off by zeroing the inclinometer on my table saw face and then adjusting my table saw blade to get to 67.5 degrees. A tenoning jig is a great accessory to help make these accurate cuts. Since I don't have one of these, I built something similar out of scrap plywood that would serve the purpose for this particular build. I get the board aligned properly in relation to the blade and then hold it in place using some compression clamps. I also make a quick check to make sure that the clamps are not in the pathway of the saw blade. I make all the cuts for the 22 and a half degree corners and then adjust my saw blade to make the last two 45 degree cuts. With all the angles cut, I then take the boards and put them back on my workbench and do a quick dry fit to make sure that there's nothing egregiously wrong with any of the angles that I've cut. Now, unfortunately, I lost the footage of me doing this, but I ended up cutting off a half inch of each of the boards that we recently routed, which is going to be used as both decorative molding as well as trim to help keep the plexiglass in place in a later step. So you have to use your imagination for how that was done. Next, I'll be swapping out my saw blade for a dado stack to cut a quarter inch rabbit on both sides of each of the boards that we have. The rabbits are going to be used to hold the backing on the back side and the plexiglass on the front side of the flag case. To give you an idea of how all this is going to fit together, the plexiglass is going to sit inside that rabbit and then the molding is going to come up on top and hold the plexiglass in place. To glue the flag case together, I apply some tight bond 2 on the inside corner of the boards. I then use a strap clamp made by Bessie to apply even pressure at each of the corners. In addition to this, I also use some compression clamps on each of the corners 
just to close any remaining gaps that there is in the joint. As you can see, I struggled with this corner for a little bit. These steep angles are pretty unforgiving in terms of leaving a gap, but as you can see, the corners turned out pretty well. Having some additional clamping pressure in addition to the trap clamp really helped close any remaining gap that there was between the two pieces of wood. To make the back panel that'll sit on the rabbit that we just cut, I'll be using some quarter inch plywood. I take some measurements from the inside of the rabbit from the flag case that we've just glued together and transfer those onto the quarter inch plywood and then use a combination of my jigsaw and my table saw to cut out the triangle. I installed some picture frame turn buttons to keep the back panel from moving and I put a little bit of a downward bend prior to installing them so that there was just a little bit of downward pressure. This will prevent the back panel from moving once the flag is in place. To properly honor this veteran and to add a personal touch, I carved a Marine Corps logo onto a nameplate and added some personal details so they can be remembered for many years to come. I used some aerosol semi-gloss lacquer to finish this nameplate as well as the rest of the flag. I used a tape measure to find the center point of the bottom piece of molding and then used some CA glue to attach the nameplate to the molding. The last step in this process is to cut the plexiglass similar to how we made the triangle backing and then secure it in place with the molding. Once I arrange the molding in place, I secure it with some 18 gauge brad nails. About two to three per side will do just fine. So here's how the final flag case turned out. I was really happy with how bold the Paduke and the purple heart contrasted against the maple to really make the entire case pop. I think this is a really special personal touch for this particular veteran. And on the bright side, all the sun tanning that we did on the purple heart worked because the purple actually restored itself to its original color. So that's a nice little trick to pick up. From a woodworking perspective, this is one of those projects that you can batch out a couple at a time while you're making one because it doesn't add a lot of incremental time to do two or three or even four because most of the time that you spend is the setup for the major steps that you're going to do. So I decided to batch out a couple more while I was making this one, including a variation where I started and ended with white stripe. So you can be the judge which one you like the best. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked my take on the flag case. I've got a lot more content coming, so subscribe, smash that like button, and I will see you on the next one.